Welcome to Mini Mastery. In this series, we're going to be painting my player's miniatures from primer to tabletop ready. We're going to be going through each player's mini and starting from just a primer mini and painting it through layer by layer, step by step. You'll be able to see the progress, follow along, and learn about the characters who are in our current campaign. Let's check it out. All right, as we continue to paint Dave the Dwarf from our adventuring group in one of our campaigns, Dave is a fighter. And you can see in the miniature here, he's wearing armor. We've got the fabrics done. Next layer is the armor. And there is chain mail as well as some plate. So we're going to paint him similar but a little different. And because he's kind of a straightforward fighter, I'm going to go with just a triad. So using a medium gray, we're going to do the chain mail first. Even though the plate is also going to be the same basic color, I want to do them as two components to keep the separation in my mind and painting a little bit different. So just popping on the initial grays, that way keeping the tone correct for that chain mail. And this can be a little bit tricky with the way the chain mail is sculpted. Getting into all the recesses can be pretty challenging, so you have to make sure to keep your paint flowing off your brush really well. Thin it down a little bit so that it goes into the recesses. And really make sure that your coverage is good and thorough. Since this is the base layer and we're going to be doing a dark wash on top of it, we want to make sure that we've got really good coverage on those chainmail sleeves and the skirt. And this gray here, we know it's going to be a little bit darker, but already we're seeing good contrast with the orange-red sleeves and the blue pants. So I think it's going to look really well and really have those standout colors pop off the mini once it's completed. Now the challenges of getting into all of those chain link areas on this chain armor take a little bit of time. Of course, we've sped this up to keep it nice and short, but really making sure that we have good coverage is key because this base layer is going to be the most important layer to get the additional layers that we're going to put on top of it to really blend together um, without really blending. So because it's chain mail, it's a lot of little bits and pieces of metal. There won't be as much blending, especially because it's a very small miniature. But the color's got to flow really, really well. So just finishing these bits up here and making sure we've got good coverage. We'll let that dry and clean out the brush really well. And then for the next section, as we work on the colors, we've already got them laid out on the palette, but making sure that we have the good progressions, we'll go in and start laying in that shadow wash, which this is just a black liner that's thinned down even more, and add in those shadows, really darken this chain mail up. We want this to look almost like iron, like it was just wrought. The character received the armor from Dwarven Craftsmen, so very well made. But again, we want to highlight the fact that it's pretty average armor at this point. It was crafted average. And then even though in the game he's going to have it enchanted, we want to have it really look like just standard armor, thus the triad. And getting that wash in there, you can see how dark that is and how that 
Blue especially really stands out against it. The sleeves a little bit as well. Those would be great pops of color once the miniature is completed, especially when we complete the gauntlet gloves and the boots. You'll really see that color stand out. And just another brush washing here. And continuing to lay in color and make sure that we've got good coverage. So Dave, as the fighter, he is definitely a character who isn't looking to be the leader of the group. He is there to assist the group with making sure that tasks that they're getting are complete, taking on challenges head on, but he's not such a risk taker that he's going to jeopardize himself or his party. Recently, they were hunting a cataplebius, and upon stocking up, which I was surprised they were able to do with as heavy armor as they were wearing, but they rolled really well. He didn't take an absolute crazy risk and try to rush into the water. So Dave knows his limitations and utilizes good judgment on the battlefield while looking for tactical advantages and then getting right up to start dealing some damage and uh, even taking hits to protect his fellow adventurers. Uh, great character. The player is doing really well. And as we're working on this mini, I said in the last video there are already a couple of details that I want to highlight to call out kind of the player's background as well. So as we get to those details, I'll I'll clue you in a little bit more, but there are little bits here and there that um, are going to be painted specifically for the player more so than the character. Um, I'm really excited to see this one progress into the next couple of levels. In the game, they just had a level up recently, so I'm exciting to see how some of the feats are being applied in-game. And here as we're working on the shield... The light, of course, is going to be coming from the top of the mini. So knowing that is going to allow us to start doing the highlights after we get this all base coated in. Uh, the helmet as well. Because we know that light is coming from directly above, that'll dictate how we highlight this mini. But you can already see the difference in the plate and shield versus the chain sleeves and skirt so good color contrast so far I'm pretty happy with it and for the next step we're going to change the technique a little bit um, just because again with that chain mail I want to really differentiate it from the rest of the miniature so we'll change out from the sable hair brush to just a little bit of an older brush that we can really mash up and change up. And we're going to do some dry brushing. And that means getting the brush nice and dry. So put some paint on and brush off excess. And this is back to the dark gray. So the base coat. Stippling this on that chain, it's going to stay on the higher areas. So it won't go into the recesses, leaving our shadows nice and dark, but giving the texture that's sculpted into this chainmail. Again, this is really a challenging mini to paint because it's so small. So dry brushing is definitely important to get the colors laid down in a good manner on this small, tiny texture. Dwarves and gnomes and halfling miniatures Definitely one of the more challenging miniatures to paint. But they're also a lot of fun just because they have some really good details. So cleaning the brush out and then moving on to the next lighter gray. You can see just getting that paint onto the brush and then drying it off. Um, of course, in between each paint color, as I wash the brush, I'm allowing it to dry out because the dry brush technique, you definitely need that brush to be 
the bristles to be dry. Otherwise your paint is gonna stay in the belly and come out more fluidly. So that's kind of the secret between or behind dry brushing is you really wanna have a dry brush so that the paint doesn't stay as a, a real flowing liquid in the belly of the bristles of your brush. So super important. So the party members have just gotten kind of a, an updated quest to be able to go on. Um, this should lead them all into level five. And this part of the story in the campaign is really going to kind of tie in some of the threads early on. Here we go with the next lightest. And just continuing to dry brush that chain mail. You'll note that there are some bits that go over onto the plate mail. I'm being really careful around the legs and the sleeves, but I'm not as concerned about the plate elements because they have the same base coat. We'll go back in and clean those up. But just working on the highlights, the painting area is getting smaller and smaller and focused to the top where our source lighting is coming from. That will, of course, as we put in highlights with the other areas, show where that light source is slotted and mirror up with the rest of the painting. But that's a quick dry brush on the miniature, nice and easy. And again, just a, a good triad with a dark wash for the shadows. Nothing too difficult about it. Here are the brightest highlights. So this is just a white highlight, super thin, and just on the very highest areas. This allows us to not only do that chain texture, but really identify the highest areas where they're gonna be hitting or where that direct light is gonna be hitting. So the final step, three grays, a black wash, and a white highlight. Um, even though it's actually five colors, it's really just a triad because black and white aren't considered the paint colors. But good texture to it. You can see the flows and really pretty decent for such a small mini. There again, you can see where it's kind of gone over some of that plate, but we've been really careful for the fabric. So now we're just going to clean up the plate elements with our base color and reestablish those lines between the chain mail and the plate elements. Just make it nice and clean so that we can start highlighting on the plate elements. And we did speed this entire video up just because this process took a little bit longer than I anticipated. Um, of course, the chain mail takes a little bit. Dry brushing definitely helps speed it up. But I really wanted to do a real good justice on the highlights. So I spent a lot of time really making sure that the blends of paint weren't too stark so we don't have huge lines of differentiation between shades. So lots of blending in between the paint colors to try to make it a real smooth transition. Then of course with the paint on the lower shades, I cover about three quarters to half of what I've previously painted to highlight up. As we get to the final highlights, those will get smaller and smaller uh, until we end up with our bright white where it's just a pinpoint of that direct light reflecting off the surface. That's how we paint it, to have that illusion of non-metallic metal. For non-metallic metal, I really like it for tabletop minis, as well as when I'm doing commissions or any type of competition. It's definitely a harder technique. You definitely could just paint this a metallic color and call it a day, or even different shades of a metallic color 
but for the tabletop especially, I think it really stands out a little bit more prominently, uh, giving it almost a more heroic look by using the non-metallic metal paint. And while I did base coat the sword, I'm not worried about it right now. I just wanted to hit that base coat on there, but I'm not going to highlight that now. It's because I'm there's still a little bit of wonkiness to it from being on the table. And even though the miniature doesn't use a sword in game, they have a great axe that the uh, Dave the Dwarf uses. I'm still actually considering changing out the weapon. I haven't finally decided yet, but I'm not overly worried about the sword, aside from just getting a base coat on so I use up some of the paint and start getting my mind thinking about the metal as a whole and consistently. But I may change my mind uh, as it applies to the sword. Starting to do some highlights and working up. This miniature here has some areas that are not going to be in the light, but I still want to add some lighter elements. So if you look in the real world, uh, refracted light or reflected light off of the ground kind of bounces up and hits elements that are away from your overhead light source. So that's what I emulate here on a couple of the areas. And then for the helmet, of course, it's directly up. So the highlights will be going to the top. And the helmet is actually a pretty interesting shape. It's got these four almost uh, divot areas and the visor part is kind of a crown-esque. And those bits, as well as around the arms, I'm going to be painting a non-metallic metal gold color, I'm pretty sure but I wanted the helmet proper, the center part of the helmet to match the armor. Because they bought it as a suit of armor, I wanna make sure that it ties together and really looks as though it's part of the actual armor and shield. And as we go through and just start building up highlights, moving from the darkest color up to the lightest, being very mindful for where we place those highlight areas, working up. The shield to me is pretty interesting. Some of the details, it's got some scroll work that I'm gonna do in the non-metallic gold to tie into the armor and the helmet, but it's got these really cool designs on it that I'm going to do something kind of funky with. Um, not in this video. In this video, I'm only working on the grays of the shield, the armor, and the helmet. Uh, as well as the chain, which we've completed. So Dave the fighter as a dwarf. The party is back in their home kind of territory, and the dwarves have splintered out into a couple of new clans, and the primary dwarven clan, who are traditionalists, are attempting to get all of the smaller clans back together in one. And there's a bit of story bit there if the party decides to investigate it. It doesn't tie into the primary overarching story, but just some opportunity for additional storytelling with Dave. Again, I don't coerce or railroad my players into stories, but try to bring in some details that they can explore should they want to. Add in additional role playing or character arcs or anything like that. So I put some hooks out there and see if there are any bites. If they want to explore them, then I'm happy to delve into them deeper with the character. That's one of those items where the player actually gets to help flesh out more of their story. So try to do that for each of the players. Luckily with Dave being a dwarf, it was nice and easy because in the game world, there is a dwarf clan with some kind of factioning going on. 
So using the sable hair brush, just continuing to do highlights and lots of blending from that base dark gray up to the brightest color, which will be just shy of a bright white. And then we'll have a highlight pinpoint of bright white on the necessary parts where the light would actually be shining too. But some areas of this were a little more challenging with the way the shield is being held. And then actually the beard as well has a couple of areas where it's a little more challenging to do the painting. And again, because it's a dwarf, it's a smaller figure. So even though it's 28 millimeter in scale, it's still only about three quarters of an inch high. So still pretty tiny to do this much detail work. But again, as a reward for my players, this is something that I always do for a new campaign that I'm the DM for. And kind of a thank you for them taking the time to participate. So I wanted to do Dave the Dwarf after we finished Jaw the Paladin. Uh, again, partly because of the sculpt I really love and some of the details on there really spoke to me for both the character as well as the player. I was able to jump right in. Now that we're getting more and more story behind us, I'm getting a better feeling for both the player as well as the character. So it's nice to be able to integrate some of those details in. Like I said, with the armor having it more just a triad of grays rather than a dark or a very light, um, shiny, almost Excalibur chromed armor, just more utilitarian. I think the variance when you see the party together is you're able to see a lot of different characteristics of the player characters through the minis, the way that they're being painted. So it's kind of cool, this video series. I'm really excited to see how it turns out in whole because when we have the party together, once all of them are painted, seeing the kind of variations from member to member is going to be pretty exciting. I'm really looking forward to getting all of these painted. I only wished I could do all of them at once or in just a couple of sittings. But I'm a realist as well and have to really take care of real life outside of just painting minis. Again, these minis, the colors, while I'm choosing them, are really being led by the players. The way that they're playing the characters, items that they're doing in-game, are really leading to my decisions on what colors to choose and what colors to focus on and lean on. It's super rewarding. If you haven't painted in this kind of style, before, I highly recommend trying it. It's very rewarding. Again, your players will love seeing how they impacted your choices. And as a group, it's going to be cool to see how the party members all stand together, um, what differentiates them and what kind of ties them together. I'm going to be interested to see that at the end of this series. But we've got five party members to paint. We're on number two right now. Again, still early in the campaign story. Most of the party has just hit level four. So we've got a little bit of story behind us, but they're just kind of getting into the meat of the game world's overarching story. So we'll see how that affects the party going forward as well. So Dave, as I said, actually in-game uses a great axe that was just enchanted. So it's a plus one great axe and just had a couple of combats where he's able to utilize it. 
I try to look at items that I can incorporate into the minis as well. And again, I'm, I'm tempted on this one to do a little bit of conversion with the sword, but I'm not positive. Just because I like to do any conversions prior to attaching it to the base and primering it. So I'm not 100% yet. We'll see. You can see on the shield especially, but the armor as well, where the highlights are starting to really define the armor. It's separated really well from the chain, bits and pieces, and the illusion of highlight, stark highlight, is really starting to come through on that metal. The non-metallic coloring is working pretty well so far. I'm pretty happy with it in this miniature where we're at. The kind of variance from the chain armor to the plate I'm happy with. The color contrasts are good. Even though it's the same color base, the same spectrum of colors, there feels like there's a good differentiation between the two materials, which is that optic illusion that we wanted to create from the chainmail to the plate elements. So far, I'm really happy with how this is coming out. And with those highlights continuing to bring us up to the highest points or where that light is reflecting off of, it's giving us a good, almost depth on the miniature. So because it's so small, we really have to augment those. If you were just to put this under a light, you would definitely have some light and shadow. But by having this transition, this gradual transition from dark to light to white is super important for the miniature painting process. The miniature as a whole just loses a lot of depth. You're not able to pick out the variances in materials if you don't do a decent paint job. So super important that we really make sure that we're paying attention to the difference in materials, how the light reacts with those materials, and then having good graduating shadow to light on the mini. But the shield alone, we're getting into some of the final highlighting areas here. We want to start narrowing out those highlight points. So getting smaller and tighter. Of course, because it's metal, the brightest points are actually the smallest points. The general grayed color up into the whites, we did really broadly at first, now getting it tighter and tighter until we get to the final points. And that's true on the helmet as well. You can see here where we're laying in some of the brighter colors. This is just being at the very, very top and then just a little bit down those sides because we want to highlight that kind of shape of the helmet, that those in-between pieces between that. I'm calling it a crown um, end on that helmet. And as we paint that gold, that'll really make those highlights stand out as well. And the shield continuing to highlight it up. Because the light is coming from overhead, the highlights are going to be absolutely vertical and not horizontal. So just getting tighter and tighter bands. And it's kind of funky because of that filigree on the shield are almost vertical as well. So having to offset from that a little bit. And just getting again tighter and tighter, smaller and smaller. Now compared to when we first started where that was just one solid gray from the primer, you can definitely tell the depth, the sculpt, the shapes, highlighting from painting is really making this more dynamic. It's allowing the sculpt to be seen with the eye even better, which is what a good paint job should do. The sculpts are beautiful. We need to be able to see them really well with the eye. 
And again, working around that filigree, the little bits of brighter and brighter highlights around the armor and on the helmet, just smaller and smaller bits. This is where a good brush is just absolutely critical. You need to have a good belly to hold the paint, but a real fine point to be able to lay the paints down exactly where you need them. Can't stress enough as you get to this stage how important good brushes are. So important when you get into these stages. Here we're just tapping in the final highlights of white, just where the light is going to be hitting, directly where the light is going to be hitting. So we won't do the underparts. Anything that's curved back and has that refracted or reflected light, um, just where the light is directly going to hit. And just about done, final bit. And that's where we're going to get this week. There is Dave, our fighter, in his armor glory. So we've still got a long way to go, but I'm super happy with how that armor has turned out so far. Hope you enjoyed, and leave your comments for what your thoughts are on Dave the Dwarf. Let me know if you have questions on it. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed. Here's an additional video that we feel you may like. And be sure to hit the subscribe button as we continue to grow and develop. Our first milestone of 25 subscribers is going to lead to five of those subscribers drawn at random to receive a free t-shirt. Make sure to share and help us grow. Thank you and be sure to comment below. Where will your adventures take you?